Delightful night in sports ahead because we have not just 10 games in the NBA, but also a nice little five game slate over in the NHL. And who better to prepare us for tonight's action than Tom Vecchio? We'll have Tom on to break down both the NBA and the NHL, get his thoughts on the best night, best bets on the board over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom does prop work for us over at number fire I also hosts our nba dfs podcast the daily iso tom sounds like it is a fun night in the nba fun mildly sarcastic so how are you doing today i'm doing great yeah fun is one way to put it uh there's a lot of injuries tonight uh you know a number of teams on the second night of a back-to-back uh the potential for anthony davis returning for the lakers he's been out since uh mid-december early december whenever it was so there's a lot going on tonight i'm in a very lucky spot where I play NBA DFS as like a luxury thing. So if I look at the injury report and see that it is an, a headache, I just lock out for the night. And I feel like that is an ideal spot to be in. Um, as someone who doesn't need NBA DFS to prop things up, I can just lean on other stuff and be like, I'm not going to deal with this. I don't want to sit around my computer until 10 o'clock, uh, you know, checking in actors and stuff like that. So um, that's a privilege that I am. I'm very honored to hold. Yeah, that's a, uh... That's always a, a lug, like you said, it's a luxury. It, yeah. Things change, late swap, especially with the, the the West Coast games. But obviously, that's where you can find a massive edge, and it's also, you know, where you can find a massive edge in the prop market. If if lines are posted and a player gets ruled out, and you had an over, well, all of a sudden that that for the other player, that line moves up, and all of a right. sudden you had him at twenty seven. Now that line is up at thirty, so you're in a pretty good spot. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll break down some spots, uh, try to find some spots that we like as of now. Uh, it is about 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday and break down Tom's favorite bets for both NBA and NHL later on today. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our NFL Conference Championship first look went up on Monday, broke down Patrick Mahomes injury broke down my thoughts on uh, Chiefs, Bengals, and 49ers, Eagles. Couple money lines I like there. Uh, we'll talk more about that tomorrow with Ryan Williams. We'll also have some prop discussion with Brandon Gadula coming up on Friday. So make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also find these uh, episodes up on the FanDuel YouTube page if you want the video version instead. The NFL playoffs are here, and the easiest way to get into the action is the FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. New customers, join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So, football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text to open y In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-89-9789. Now let's kick things off here with the NBA. We do have a couple of nationally televised games for tonight. We got uh, the, the Nets at the 76ers. We got the Grizzlies at the Warriors. Tom, and people are watching those games. Any bets you like across those two specifically? Well, as of right now, Joel Embiid is listed as questionable for the 76ers. So there are no props that I'm seeing for the 76ers players. So this, so first off, right from the jump, I think five points for the Nets is pretty good right now. If Embiid gets ruled out, would not be a surprise to see that drop to, to three, to two, somewhere around there. So huge note for the 76ers. How does that impact things if he's out? Well, we could be looking at James Harden, who would play an even further 
uh, a further increased role in their offense if Embiid were to be ruled out. So a PRA bet for Harden would be very much on the table with his ability to push towards a triple-double, as he's always been known to do over the course of many years. But also, if Embiid is ruled out, this should make an easier path for Nick Claxton, the starting center for the Brooklyn Nets, who is routinely putting up big games. Right now, he's uh, third, he has the third shortest odds for Defensive Player of the Year. He's taken a big step forward for the Nets. Uh, he's, I think he's plus 700 for Defensive Player of the Year. But a rebounding prop for Claxton would be pretty solid. Right now, it's at 9.5 minus 128. I don't love the odds. If that were to change just a little bit, maybe a little bit closer to even money, minus 114, minus 106, somewhere around there, I'd have a, a little bit more interest. But that means the 76ers could be starting P.J. Tucker at center, and that is a, a, just a size mismatch in the favor of Claxton. So that would be a spot I'm, I'm absolutely targeting uh, for, the, for the Nets. Again, plus five, I think is a little bit much right now, especially if Embiid is ruled out look to Harden, and then Claxton rebounding prop. Is the Claxton one something you would avoid if Embiid it winds up being confirmed as in, or is this one you like regardless? It's not It's not one that I'm like avoiding. It's yeah. just like P.J. Tucker is, I think he's 6'9", six, 6'8", six, and Claxton is 7' or 7'1", but they just run P.J. Tucker out at center. So it's just, it's just a, a mismatch in terms of like the actual on-court stuff. Where PJ Tucker's not a center, like yeah. he's literally he's not six a center. five according to NBA. He's, he's five. So in shoes, he's like you know six seven or whatever it is. But yeah. Nick Claxton is seven feet. So and Doc Rivers just likes to run PJ Tucker out at center just because they they the way they play they play small, move the ball with Harden, Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey. So it is literally just the size mismatch in favor yeah. of Claxton. Um, so that's what I would like. But just one, I still one think it's to, a good bet. Yeah. One way to cut the juice back a bit is you can just look in the alternate market. Uh, 10 plus rebounds, which is actually the exact same number, is minus 125. So a bit better. Um, it's a reminder. This is with strikeout props, too. Always check the alt market and check the same number and see if you can get a better number because sometimes you can. Uh, it will slip through the cracks. So um, I would check alternate markets as well, see if you can get a better number on uh, 10 plus rebounds on Claxton or something of that nature. So those we're looking in the, uh, the Nets and 76ers, any other uh, bets you like for Grizzlies versus Warriors? Yeah, really, really like this matchup. I, and the over under should tell you what we're going to see. It's up at 244 and a half. This is very, very high. Uh, we're dealing with two very fast paced teams. The note for this game is that the Grizzlies starting center, Steven Adams is going to be out for three to five weeks with a PCL injury, which means they will have new starting lineup which either means Xavier Tillman is going to be in the starting is the new starting center, or they're going to have Jaron Jackson Jr. Who is currently the odds on favorite to win defensive player of the year as their who's normally their power forward would shift over to center. If they run things small against the Warriors, which is not a surprise uh, just, you know, the way the Warriors play Draymond green at center. Again, he's on a true center, all these defensive matchups. So love the scoring potential from this game. Number one bet for me would be Desmond Bain. Uh, shooting guard from the Grizzlies. Right now, his, his three-point prop is sitting at two and a half, and it's minus 146 on the over. Don't love that. Prefer to go to Bain four plus three-pointers at plus 180 because the Grizz, uh, because the Warriors are in the bottom 10 of the league for the most three-pointers allowed per game to their opponents. Now, when we look at Desmond Bain's game log, it's very clear that he has this potential where – Three, two, five, three, five, four, three, four three pointers made over his last stretch of games, which, and he's shooting three pointers at very high volume, you know, four, six, eight, upwards of 10 in some of these games. So, with this high paced over under, there's just gonna be so many possessions that he should have the chance to get there. Him getting to over two and a half is, is a pretty solid bet based on his consistency, as I just noted that he's been doing, but I don't love minus 146. It's just this, you know, dynamic of, he can probably get to three, but I don't like the 146. With this game environment being up at 244 and a half, he can probably just get to four. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, a spot that I'd be willing to go uh, with Bain. Uh, the implied odds of minus 146, 59.4%. Uh, the implied odds at plus 180 are 35.7%. So you're getting much lower implied odds. Obviously he does need to get one additional, but it's only one additional made three. And obviously made threes are a pretty volatile market, but that's also not a bad thing. 
if you're getting if you are benefiting from that volatility and getting a bigger number. So plus 180, I think, does make sense for Bain. Again, the number you mentioned uh, over two and a half minus 146 there. But then the alt market uh, four plus is plus 180 for Desmond Bain. So he's the primary target for you in this game. Yes, absolutely. Just the way their offense has been running. He consistently goes for you know 20 plus real 20 plus points. It's not always from three pointers, but he's that right. secondary scorer behind John Morant. Okay, well, let's open things up then. A lot of other games on the slate for tonight in the NBA. Hopefully some with some uh, less ambiguity, like the Joel Embiid injury. But where else do you see value in the NBA right now? Well, less ambiguity. I wish I had a a better answer for that. But Denver is plus eight right now. It was seven and a half like 30 minutes ago. Uh, It's plus eight right now. Denver is the number one team in the West. They're on the road. They're visiting Milwaukee Bucks, who are two or three in the East. Denver's on the second night of a back-to-back. So just given this matchup, eight seems like a pretty big number for the team that is the second best or for the team that's number one in the West on the road versus the team that's, you know, one of the best teams in the East. Eight just seems like a little bit too high of a number. The issue, the concern that I have is, is why I'm hesitant on it. But ultimately my interest is Jokic played last night for the Nuggets. He missed the two most pre- recent games of the hamstring injury, but he did play last night. He dropped a triple double last night. So eight seems like a little bit much if Jokic is playing. If they're good to go, how is the best team in the West this much of an underdog against who's all, basically an equally as good team, if not a little bit worse? So I'm like really, really hesitant on this matchup because to me, it's saying, is, is Jokic actually going to play? I think what they're kind of doing most likely is that they're middling it, um, where they have the number with Jokic in there and the number without, and then kind of take the odds that he plays and use that to formula the line. I think that's probably, they do that. You see that sometimes with like ambiguous quarterback situations where they kind of middle it. I would not be shocked if that's what occur- what's occurring right now with this. Yeah. So I'm, if everyone's good to go, I would, I'd be taking Denver 10 times out of 10. Right. But they're on the second end of a back to back. Um, Bucks are getting fully healthy where they had Atentacumbo and Chris Middleton return to the lineup in their most recent game. They dropped 150 points against the Pistons in their most recent outing. So, and, you know, Middleton should be on the path to seeing more minutes, uh, you know, getting back from his injury. So I'm just kind of at a loss for this game. Yeah. That would be number one. And then from a prop perspective, Alperin Sangoon, the starting center for the Houston Rockets, over 29 and a half points plus rebounds, sitting at minus 106. He's been over in three of his last five. He's probably on one of the best stretches of his uh, very young career. Good matchup going up against the Wizards. Again, a team attack via center. Wizards on the second night of a back-to-back. They're a little bit shorthanded. There's no Kristaps Porzingis. Should make things a little bit easier for Alperin Sangoon, who is getting over this mark in some of these games by points alone. And and his double-double potential is there every night. So Singoon over 29 and a half points plus rebounds tonight. Now that has shifted up to 30 and a half. Uh, it's minus 113 on the over. Is that moving enough to scare you off? Does that erase the value or is that still a good number in that, your mind? That's still a good number. Uh, okay. Wizards are they're allowing 24.2 points per game to centers. That's the fifth worst in the league and over 14 rebounds per game to centers, which is right around the league average. So I'm all aboard Singoon tonight. Okay, so the points plus rebounds number 30 and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, minus 113 on that one. Then Tom is also keeping an eye on the Nuggets uh, stuff because, you know, seems a little bit odd uh, with the plus eight right now. But are you willing to take that now and risk Jokic not playing? Or yeah, no? yeah. Okay. They, they okay. Uh, I mean, Jamal Murray had a big game. He had a triple double the other night when Jokic was out there. I mean, they're still the best team in the West. They're still winning games when Jokic is not there. Okay. It is a very tough matchup. This is probably one of the tougher right. matchups that they had against, you know, would be have in, against the Bucs without Jokic, but they're still a good team. Okay. So Nuggets plus eight, despite the risk of Jokic potentially being up in the air for tonight. Let's shift our focus now over to the NHL side of things. And you talked about some, uh, some sides on the NBA side of things, but you also do a lot of sides, totals, et cetera, on the NHL side. So let's start there. We'll get to player props in a second. But when you look at the traditional markets on the NHL side, what are you liking for tonight? Uh, one would be the Maple Leafs hosting the New York Rangers over six. Minus 104. Uh, this is always, I want to say, kind of a good spot because you always can you always can get a push, which isn't the worst thing in the world. That's you know, it's a win in my eyes. I uh, get a push. 
Um, Rangers are a team that are underproducing right now in offense. Uh, you know, last last week when I was on talking about goals and expected goals and how you can look to capitalize on that. Over the past two weeks, the Rangers are scoring 1.51 goals per 60 minutes in 5v5 situations, which is the third worst in the league, which is just not good. But if we look at their expected goals in that same time frame, they should be up at 2.66 goals. So they're underproducing by over a full goal, which is you know, pretty, pretty big. And the Leafs are already a good offensive team, but they're actually underproducing as well. They are producing 2.52 goals and they their expected goals are up at 3.2. So they're also underproducing. Now we do have two good goaltenders on both sides, but we actually see the Leafs dealing with some injuries on defense and they're overproducing on defense right now, where if we match up their goals against current goals against at 2.16 goals and their expected goals against, it should be at 2.93. So they're overproducing on defense by 0.8 of a goal. I like to round it up to one. So we have these, we have an offense that is underproducing with the Rangers that should be trending up. We have a defense with the Leafs that is overproducing, should be trending down, and we already have a strong offense with the Leafs that actually should even be be even better. Mm -hmm. So it does set up for a game that ends four three, right? Which it, it would, which is really what we should see with the offense of players that we have on both sides. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, over six is minus one ten now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, I can see a plus one hundred five out there right now, though. Over six, my bet did get rejected on plus one hundred five, so maybe there's something wrong with that. Um, but regardless, you can still get a good number on over six if you are looking around for that one. Anything else in the sides uh, totals market for you in this uh, on this slate? Yeah, Seattle Kraken at home uh, in regulation, the sixty minute line at minus one twenty. Uh, the normal line is minus 178. I prefer to take them at 120. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks are not a good team. They fired their coach over the weekend and replaced him with uh, they had their first game yesterday under their new head coach. Comeback win against the Chicago Blackhawks last night, which means they're on second night of a back-to-back. Uh, the Kraken are just the better team. The Kraken, the, the league's newest team, uh, the expansion team, they've actually proven to be very, very solid this year in basically every category they would want in terms of shot creation, shot prevention, goals scored. Uh, you know, they didn't impress a lot of people last year, but they took a lot of players in the expansion draft that, you know, like I would classify as like B, B plus players where none of them are superstars, but they're all really solid and they do everything correctly. And that proved to be the way to do things. And with some signings in the off season, they are one of the stronger teams in the West. So I will take them at home minus 120 against a team that is on the second night of a back-to-back -back with lineup changes and players moving up and down their lineup because of the new coaching staff and all these sorts of things where sure you get your first one under a new head coach, but how much does that translate going up against an actual good team, not playing Chicago as they did last night in Chicago has their eyes set on the draft. Right. Um, minus 120, as you said, is that number on uh, the Kraken to win in regulation, to win it in 60 minutes on Correct. that side? Okay. Uh, let's open up the prop market here for you on the NHL side. What do you see in there? Going back to the Leafs and the Rangers game, William Nylander over three and a half shots. That's at plus 106. He's been over this mark in eight out of his last 10 games. He plays a, he's arguably having the best year of his offensive career. And he is a primary shooter for them. And this is one of the things that I alluded to last week when saying you kind of got to know a player's role when you're looking at things. And, uh, you know, one of the sites that I use is called dailyfaceoff.com, which has updated lines and power play units. So, when you know, when I talk about, like, overlapping things where it's like, okay, we have a good offensive team. They're going up against a weak defensive team. It's like I also want to take a player that's on the top six of their forward lines and who sees power play time. Now, as I mentioned, we don't want to adjust for power play time in terms of goals, but it's more about the player's role and that he is having extra ice time in the best possible scenario to, to shoot and to score and do all these things. So Nylander, awesome offensive year, primary shooter for them, top six and first power play role, checks literally every single box in a game that I expect to hit the over. Right. So this pace should be back and forth. Right. And it's a correlated market, too, because if you expect over six, you are kind of expecting a lot of shot volume. Um, you are expecting, um, 
uh, I'll, you know, a lot of chances. And that translates here um, to the over three and a half. Uh, three, over three and a half again is uh, plus 106 on Nylander uh, over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, the total shifting once again. I'm not sure if there's been some news in this game or something, but it keeps moving around. So it's been uh, a chaotic market. My back got rejected again, just in case. I now see over six at plus 100. I don't know, man. I, it's all over the place. Um, I'm annoyed that this, the Kraken one wouldn't go through either. So I don't know if there's something wrong with Rhode Island Sportsbook's infrastructure. Shocker. Who could have guessed that would possibly ever happen? Uh, anything else you like for tonight, Tom, besides the Nylander one? The last one would be Matt Barzell on the New York Islanders to record an assist. Now, this is a little bit specific. Um, there's a, a number of different markets when it comes to the player prop sheet. There's the shots, the goals. There's points, which would encompass goals or assist. And then you can look at specifically assist or specifically power play assist. And this is obviously like narrowing things down. And the more you narrow things down, the more value you can get. So as I mentioned last week, again, Islanders not a great offensive team, but this is an immensely easy matchup against the Senators. The Senators over the last two weeks, allowing 3.89 goals per 60 minutes, 5v5 situations, that's the second worst in the league. So they are a terrible defense, despite the lack of offense at times we see from the Islanders. This is still a good matchup. So when it comes to Barzell, over half a point is sitting at minus 144. But if we look to specifically the assist market, over half an assist is sitting at plus 122. So he's more of a playmaking center rather than a pure shooter. So if he's going to be getting a point, it's probably coming via an assist rather than a goal where if you would look at him or the, the typical profile of him would be whatever amount of goals he has, he's, he probably should be aiming to have like two X, the amount of assists. Like that's just the role he plays. He's not a, he's not Connor McDavid where he's just going to be pouring in the goals. He's more of a playmaker. So if he has a point, it's probably going to be an assist. I might as well go for plus plus one twenty two. Now, if he has a hat trick and has no assist, I'm out of luck, but right. I think that's the part of like identifying a player's role and extracting as much value as possible. That's where it really comes in handy. Yeah, I mean, you're going through this process of checking boxes, identifying good situations to target, and then you have options. So for you, let's say you're like, okay, I like the spot uh, that uh, the Islanders are in for tonight or whatever it may be. I'm going to go through players I think have good roles and then check each market. Are you do going through that? Or are you like specifically seeking out assists for someone like this and kind of seeing what the number is there? It's, it's more of the latter, um, or it's, it's, it's more of a combination where I know a player's role. Mm -hmm. So someone like, uh, like, like I mentioned Jason Robertson last week or someone yeah. like, um, the Canes play tonight. And one of my favorite players on the Canes, his name is Andrei Svechnikov. He's a, basically a pure shooter. He's like a mini Ovechkin where if he has a point, it's probably going to be a goal. He's a high yeah. volume shooter. So if I go to him, it's probably only for a goal. Now, yes, he does play in the top six. He does play on the power play. So he also can fall into assist, but I'd rather just go for the goal of the role that he should be playing. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. The good thing is you do have outs. Like, let's say you don't like the number somewhere uh, with the Barzal one. Like, let's say you, you, know, you don't like the points number, as you said. You have other options you can turn right. to, correlated markets and stuff like that. So uh, it does give you routes if you don't like one market to deviate elsewhere so bars all uh over uh zero and a half or to, to get an assist is plus 122 over at Fanduel right. sportsbook all righty tom hopefully tonight uh goes well for you want to thank you as always for swinging by uh hopefully the injury report in the nba magically the dust settles by noon and you can have a carefree relaxing wednesday yeah thanks for having me i think it should shape up to be an awesome night across both sports with some really good matchups uh in the nba along with this uh, Rangers Leafs game. I'm expecting to see a lot of goals. I hope we do. I hope that I can get this bet to go through eventually. We'll see. No one can say about that, but that's Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. Find his prop work over at number fire and his NBA DFS podcast, the daily ISO. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. We are back once again tomorrow with Ryan Williams to break down the conference championship games. That will be a blast. Make sure you're subscribed to get that right as it goes live. We'll talk to you tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.